Mager Targaryen. King Mager I Targaryen, infamously dubbed Mager the Cruel, was the third king of the Targaryen dynasty to sit on the Iron Throne. As his moniker suggests, he is known as one of the most tyrannical kings to ever rule the Seven Kingdoms. King Aegon the Conqueror had two children by his two sister wives, his firstborn son Aenys with his sister Queen Rhaenys, and his secondborn son Mager with his sister Queen Visenya Targaryen. When Aegon I eventually died, Aenys succeeded him as the second king on the Iron Throne. The Targaryens had incestuously married brother to sister for generations, whenever possible, to keep the bloodline pure, in the custom of their Valyrian ancestors. For that matter, Aegon I broke not only the faith's rules against incest, but its rules against polygamy, as he was married to both of his sisters at the same time. The faith wasn't in much position to challenge the victorious Targaryen army after the conquest, or their massive dragons, but Aegon I was wise enough to tread lightly with the faith, both sides tacitly agreed that the Targaryens' incestuous marriages were a relic of their past, which would soon fade. Aegon I didn't intend for future generations of his new dynasty to continue to have incestuous marriages, and in return, the faith didn't press the matter for the remainder of his life. Aegon I eventually died and was succeeded by his elder son, Aenys. To the surprise of all, however, later in his reign King Aenys tactlessly wed his daughter to his own son, the incestuous marriage of Princess Rena and Prince Aegon broke the Targaryens' prior promise to the faith, which could stand the abomination no longer. The new High Septon led the denunciation of the Targaryens, and the military order of the Faith of the Seven, the Faith Militant, rose up in open revolt. King Aenys proved to be an utter weakling in the face of the revolt and was completely overwhelmed. As the Faith Militant attacked lords that still supported him across the Seven Kingdoms, one particularly zealous force of the order even managed to scale the walls of the, still under construction, Red Keep, and would have killed Aenys and the royal family if not for the intervention of the King's Guard. Frightened, Aenys fled King's Landing entirely and retreated to the Targaryen fortress refuge at Dragonstone, where he soon died of cramps brought on from the stress. Aenys was then succeeded by his younger half-brother Mager, Aegon I's only child by Visenya, seizing power ahead of Aenys's own children. Mager was his brother's exact opposite, a highly skilled warrior and brutal tyrant, quickly earning him the name, Mager the Cruel. King Mager struck back against the Faith Militant. When he arrived in King's Landing his first act was to challenge their leaders to kill him in personal combat, if they believed his rule to be ungodly. The Faith accepted, and Sir Damon Morrigan proposed they hold a trial of seven, the more dangerous but theoretically more holy variant of a traditional trial by combat in which two teams of seven men fight each other. Many tales are told of their confrontation, Sir Damon and six of the Faith Militant against Mager and members of his Kingsguard, but all the stories agree that at the end, out of all fourteen men only Mager himself remained alive, proving that the throne was rightfully his. Having survived the trial of seven, Mager promptly mounted the great black dragon Balerion, his father's old mount that Mager mastered for himself upon his death, and flew it to the headquarters of the city's local chapter of the Faith Militant, at the September of Remembrance. Mager used Balerion to burn down the Sept and all who were inside while they were in the middle of the morning prayers. Hundreds of the Faith Militant burned to death, their screams echoing through the streets. Mager now demanded the complete destruction of the Faith Militant, and made war upon the Order wherever he found it. Yet the Faith Militant would not surrender, raising its own armies across the realm, and turning some of Mager's own lords against him. Many battles were fought as the Faith Militant uprising dragged on for years, lasting throughout all of Mager's reign. Mager finished constructing the Red Keep during his reign, including the formidable central fortification which was named, Mager's Holdfast, after him. After the construction was finished, Mager had all the workers and masons killed, reportedly in order that only he would know all of the secret tunnels he had them build hidden throughout the castle. Eventually, Mager's reign of terror came to an end when he died upon the Iron Throne itself. Mager's cruelty died with him, however, as he was succeeded by Eniza's remaining son, who became King Jaehaerys I. A wise and benevolent ruler, Jaehaerys I made peace with the faith in return for disbanding the faith militant, ending the uprisings. Jaehaerys's subsequent long reign did much to mend the wounds to the realm caused by Mager. House of the Dragon, Season 1 Mager is depicted in one of four statues in the Great Hall of the Red Keep. With around 70 years having passed since Mager's death, Princess Rhaenys Targaryen and Lord Corlys Valerion discuss how his reign, now a lifetime ago, was the most recent great war in the Seven Kingdoms, and how the knights competing at the Heirs Tournament have never truly seen battle. Ser Otto Hightower also uses Mager's name to evoke how much of a threat he believes Prince Daemon Targaryen would be if he ever becomes king. Game of Thrones, Season 1 While visiting the Great Hall of the Red Keep, 
Septa Mordain quizzes Sansa Stark on her history lessons and asks her who built the structure and the Iron Throne. Sansa correctly responds that Aegon the Conqueror made the Iron Throne and Maegar the Cruel built the Red Keep. Game of Thrones, Season 2 Wisdom Helene mentions that Maegar was a great patron of the Alchemists' Guild and their work producing wildfire, which he used against his enemies. In the books In the A Song of Ice and Fire novels, Maegar was the second son of Aegon I Targaryen. His mother was Aegon's elder sister-wife Visenya Targaryen. He was the third king of the Targaryen dynasty, usurping the throne ahead of his half-brother Aenys's children, and is infamously remembered as a brutal tyrant. Aegon I kept a mobile royal court, making royal progresses around his new realm to bind it together, and while the Red Keep was still under construction. Aegon kept Aenys with him as his heir, while Maegar was raised back at the ancestral Targaryen castle on Dragonstone. In time Maegar was commonly referred to as the Prince of Dragonstone, Though at the time this was just a nickname, it became a byword for his status as Aenys's presumed heir. Maegar was a preternaturally skilled swordsman, not unlike the later Jaime Lannister, at the age of barely twelve he easily defeated squires five years older than himself. He was one of the youngest men ever knighted, at only sixteen years old. In contrast, Aenys was physically frail and no great warrior, better suited to the comforts of court life and a patron of the arts. While Aenys wore fine silks at court, during his own reign Maegar most commonly wore armor, because he was constantly on military campaigns. When the two brothers were young, Aenys bonded with the dragon Quicksilver, one of the progeny of Aegon I's original three dragons. Maegar, however, refused to bond with any of the other half-dozen dragon hatchlings at the time, claiming none were worthy. Apparently, Maegar was holding out for his father's own mount, Beleriand the Black Dread himself, the greatest living dragon, after Aegon I died of a stroke in his old age, Maegar successfully bonded with the Great Beast and used him to devastating effect in crushing those who rebelled against the Iron Throne. Aegon the Conqueror maintained a polygamous marriage with both of his sisters, Aenys's mother Rhaenys and Maegar's mother Visenya. Aegon himself always treated Aenys as his heir apparent because he was older than Maegar, though given young Aenys's frailty, there were some who muttered that Maegar should be his heir, given that he was his firstborn by Visenya, those who said this were chiefly Visenya herself and her supporters, though Aegon I would hear none of it. Aegon I was still wary of offending the faith of the seven, and promised them that his family's marriage practices of incest and polygamy, which the faith considered abominations, were a relic of the past which they wouldn't continue in the future. To assure him of this, he had Aenys marry Alyssa Valerion as a political match, who was mother to all of his children. Thus, the birth of Aenys's own children pushed Maegar even further back in the line of succession, as by the normal laws of Westeros an uncle only inherits after his elder brother's entire bloodline is extinguished. Maegar's mother Visenya didn't give up on her ambitions in court politics, however, pushing for Maegar to one day succeed ahead of Aenys. Thus when Aenys's first child was born, his daughter Rena, Visenya urged Aegon I to betroth her to her Maegar, her own half-uncle. Aegon I, however, dismissed the suggestion, both because he didn't want to risk offending the faith with such an incestuous marriage, and, it is believed, because he had become frustrated with Visenya's constant attempts to usurp Rhaenys' son Aenys with her own. To further appease the High Septon, Aegon made Maegar marry Cerise of House Hightower, the High Septon's own niece. As the years passed Maegar failed to produce any heir, and there were fears that he was sterile, causing him to lose supporters, who didn't think it was worth upsetting Aegon I's intended succession for an heir who couldn't continue the family line anyway. After their father Aegon I died from a stroke in old age, in 37 AC, Aenys succeeded to the throne. Four separate localized rebellions immediately broke out trying to seize on the opportunity of what they perceived as Aegon's weak successor, in the Iron Islands, at Harenhal, at the Eyrie, and the Vulture King leading a bandit army in the Red Mountains along the border with Dorne. Their bastard uncle Oris Baratheon died from his wounds successfully putting down the insurrection in Dorne, and the current hand of the king died putting down the rebels at Harenhal, while Maegar used Beleriand to successfully crush the rebels in the Vale. When the rebel lords heard Maegar and Beleriand were coming, they surrendered without a fight and executed their ringleader Jonos Aaron, who had overthrown and killed his own brother Ronald to seize power, by throwing him out of the moon door. They hoped that their surrender might gain them mercy, but Maegar ordered them all hanged regardless. As a reward for his success in handling the rebellion in the Vale, Aenys named Maegar to fill the vacant office as his new hand of the king. With Aegon I, Rhaenys, and now Oris dead, Dowager Queen Visenya became the last of the conquest generation of Targaryens, and she did much to aid her son Maegar's rise in power. Aenys even gave Maegar the ancestral Valyrian steel sword of House Targaryen, Blackfire, 
which had been carried by their father, openly acknowledging that Mager was a better warrior than he ever was. For a brief two years, the two brothers ruled the realm together in peace. Yet Mager grew increasingly frustrated with his childless marriage, as Enes continued to produce more heirs of his own to push him far down in line of succession, and the High Septon would never grant Mager a separation from his own niece Sarais. Eventually, two years into Enes's reign Mager polygamously took a second wife, Alice of House Haraway, the ceremony performed by Visanya, as no Septon was willing to perform it, although it was not an act of incest, the main source of conflict between the Faith and the Targaryens, but polygamy, it angered the Faith so much, since incest and polygamy are both considered as heavy sins, that Enes had to strip him off his office and exile him to Pentos. Enes then announced that he was making Prince of Dragonstone the official title of the designated heir to the throne, and that he was bestowing it on his son Prince Aegon, to dispel any lingering sentiments that Mager was his direct heir ahead of his own children. With Mager gone, there was no pragmatic restraint on Enes's poor decisions. Despite an already strained relationship with the Faith, due to Mager's polygamous marriage, two years later Enes foolishly announced the marriage of his daughter and eldest child Rena to his eldest son Aegon, that deed poured oil on the flames, directly sparking the Faith militant uprising. Enes was physically and emotionally overwhelmed by the rebellion, and fled King's Landing entirely to withdraw to Dragonstone, where he became nearly catatonic and is said to have died of cramps brought on by the stress, though many suspect that Visanya poisoned him. Whatever the case, barely an hour after Enes's body was cremated, Visanya flew to Pentos on Bagger to retrieve Mager, who flew back with her to Westeros riding Valyrian. Rain. Upon his return to Dragonstone in 42 AC, Mager was immediately crowned king, usurping the throne ahead of Enes's five children. Rather than wear Enes's ostentatiously large gold crown, Mager wore his father Aegon I's own crown, a circlet of Valyrian steel with seven cut rubies set in it, symbolically asserting his status as his father's true heir, now possessing his father's crown, sword, and dragon. Grand Maester Gon was the only one to openly protest, pointing out that Enes had three sons, Aegon, Viserys, and Jaehaerys, and by every inheritance law in Westeros, Mager was behind them in line of succession. Mager responded by beheading Gon with a single swing of blackfire, and no one else spoke a word against him, many feeling that Enes's young children could not handle the Faith Militant as Mager could. He retook King's Landing, won a trial by seven with the Faith Militant, then burned the September of Remembrance using Valyrian to wipe out their King's Landing chapter at a single stroke. An army of the Faith Militant was slaughtered at Bitterbridge, and an even greater battle was fought at the Great Fork of the God's Eye, with Mager riding Valyrian during a great rainstorm. This battle was bloody but decisive, with Mager wiping out the opposing force. Nonetheless, uprisings continued in similar though usually smaller scale flashpoints for the next six years, Mager would always succeed in destroying the Faith Militant's armies when they marched openly against him, but he would still end up losing men and resources to attrition, and before long more new converts to the Faith Militant would pop up again in another part of the realm far away from where his main armies had currently moved. Also, when Mager returned from the Free Cities in 42 AC he brought with him a new, third polygamous wife, called Tiana of Pentos, rumored to be a sorceress and poisoner. Mager appointed her as his new mistress of Whisperers, and she became greatly feared. In 43 AC, Enes's son and heir Prince Aegon, who had managed to avoid capture, led his own revolt against Mager to claim the throne that was rightfully his. This was not technically considered to be part of the Faith Militant Uprising, however, because the Faith was also particularly upset about Aegon's incestuous marriage to his own sister. Prince Aegon was the new rider of his father's dragon, Quicksilver, by this time over 30 years old and a full-grown adult beast. Rebel lords rallied around Prince Aegon and his dragon, and they clashed with Mager and his army in the great battle beneath the god's eye. Prince Aegon rode Quicksilver into battle against Mager riding Valyrian, the first time two dragons had fought each other since before the doom of Valyria. Quicksilver, however, had no hope of defeating the older and larger Valyrian, then at the height of his power and majesty both Prince Aegon and his dragon died in the battle. In 44 AC, the High Septon who initiated the uprising suddenly died, many suspect he was poisoned by Mager's agents. He was replaced by a new High Septon who was Mager's puppet, but the Faith Militant refused to surrender and the fighting continued. Also in 44 AC Dowager Queen Visanya died, last of the conquest generation of Targaryens, and Mager's greatest supporter throughout his life. He actually seemed to take her death in stride, but Enes's widow Alyssa Valerion, who had been held prisoner on Dragonstone, used the confusion of Visanya's death to escape, along with her two youngest children, Jaehaerys and Alysanne, and Visanya's own sword Dark Sister. Enes's middle son Viserys was being held hostage at the Red Keep, however, 
and when Mager found out about Alyssa's escape he had him tortured to death and his body left to rot in the courtyard, trying to lure Alyssa back to demand a proper funeral, but she didn't take the bait. In 45 AC Mager launched into a new major campaign, which resulted in him taking the skulls of 2,000 men of the Faith Militant as trophies. Mager's supporters, however, grew increasingly unsettled at such open brutality. By this point his mental state was becoming increasingly unhinged, even relative to his prior actions, because none of his wives could produce him an heir, many whispering that he could not continue the Targaryen dynasty on his own. In 44 AC, Mager's second wife Alice became pregnant. However, she gave birth to a monstrosity, eyeless and twisted. Tiana convinced Mager that it was the product of an affair Alice had, so Mager executed Alice, her midwives, the Grand Maester, and every member of House Haraway, exterminating it. Mager's first wife Cerise died a year later, it was rumored she was murdered by Sir Owen Bush of the Kingsguard. In 47 AC, following the deaths of Cerise and Alice, Mager forcibly wed three women, Jane Westerling, Eleanor Costain and Rena Targaryen, in a triple marriage ceremony, for a total of four concurrent wives. These three black brides were all the widows of men he had killed in his wars, of proven fertility because they already had children, among them his own half-niece Rena, whom he married in order to weaken any claim her younger siblings might put forth. Even then, two of his new wives, Jane and Eleanor, only bore him stillborn monsters, each of which greatly distressed him, and he descended into genuine madness. Rumors spread that Mager was cursed, he had slain his nephew, made war against the Faith and the High Septon, defied the gods, committed murder and incest, adultery and rape, people whispered that his privy parts were poisoned, his seed full of worms, the gods would never grant him a living son. Mager, however, settled on a different explanation, he had Tiana forced to confess that she had actually used poison, and possibly sorcery, to produce the stillbirths in Mager's other wives, at which he cut out her living heart with blackfire, and threw it to his dogs. At this point, the realm could tolerate Mager's behavior no longer. Later that same year in 48 AC, a new army of the Faith Militant organized, and rebel lords rallied around the fugitive Prince Jaehaerys. Mager's own master of ships Daemon Valerion left to side with the rebels, at which all of the other great lords of the realm abandoned him in short order, among them even his former close supporters like the Baratheons and even the Tullus, who had fought against Prince Aegon for him not long before. When Mager called on any remaining loyal lords to come to his aid, no armies came, even two of the King's Guard abandoned him to join the growing rebel army as it advanced on King's Landing. It was only a matter of time until they reached the defenseless city. Mager was found dead in the morning, sitting on the Iron Throne itself. The histories do not confirm exactly how he died, in some versions of the tale, he was murdered by the Iron Throne, while others suspect he was poisoned. Historians consider the most likely scenario that as Mager sat despondently on the Iron Throne in an empty hall late at night, simply waiting for the hours to pass until the rebel army came to take the city, he looked down at the still sharp blades that made up the Iron Throne and, resolving never to be taken alive, slid open his own wrists on the throne itself, and bled to death. Mager's reign of terror at an end, Eniza's rightful heir Jaehaerys was restored to the throne, ushering in an 80-year golden age for the Targaryen dynasty. Of Mager's six wives, only two survived him, Eleanor and Rena. Legacy One of the steps that Mager took to combat the faith militant was to declare it illegal for holy men to carry weapons, demanding that the order disband. Jaehaerys wisely negotiated a peace with the faith by granting an amnesty to all surviving members of the faith militant if they would only lay down their arms and disband and in return the crown would swear to always defend the faith. Mager's laws, forbidding holy men from carrying weapons remained in force up until the War of the Five Kings, when Cersei Lannister short-sightedly rescinded them to allow the faith militant to be recreated. While Mager was an infamously ruthless man, he was not necessarily considered to be medically insane, the way that many later Targaryens became insane due to generations of incestuously marrying brother to sister to keep the bloodlines pure, in the sense that he did not suffer from hallucinations. Nonetheless he was always a brutal, ruthless man with strong sociopathic tendencies, meeting out disproportionate retribution against his enemies, exterminating entire family lines if a single member failed him, and showing cruelty to animals, as a boy he killed a horse in its stable because it had kicked him. It doesn't seem that he outright enjoyed inflicting torment on random people, as the later Joffrey Baratheon did, but he would cruelly punish anyone who opposed him, and as his reign of terror spiraled out of control, his wrath led him to crush his subjects over minor slights or failures. His only response to any threat was to react with brutal force, which caused more people to turn against him in horror, which enraged him to punish them with even more brutal force, turning even more people against him, in a vicious cycle. In the last year of his reign, 
as his wives produced only deformed stillbirths, and more of his former allies turned against him, the stress did cause Mager to spiral into an emotional state of near madness and delusion. In later generations, Mager was remembered as the proverbial tyrannical king to the people of the Seven Kingdoms, any time another potential ruler appeared brutal or tyrannical, it was whispered that they would be, the next Mager the Cruel. This only stopped in the last generation, when Ares II, the Mad King, terrorized the realm, ultimately leading to his downfall in Robert's Rebellion, after which the proverb shifted to saying, he would be the next Mad King, or when Tyrion remarks that Joffrey is on his way to becoming, Ares III. Mager was so controversial that even two and a half centuries later he is still best remembered as, Mager the Cruel, and later generations of the Targaryen dynasty were tactful enough never to name one of their sons, Mager, again, except for the mad Prince Arian the Monstrous. Of all the Targaryen kings who ruled Westeros, Mager was the second and last, following Aegon the Conqueror, whose marriage was polygamous. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.